Hello! So, I am starting this vlog a little late because my last vlog overrun, uh, where I was giving authors a second chance, which I'll leave in the cards above, but I am starting now. August is Women in Translation Month, and so Matthew Sharapa, Jennifer from Insert Literary Pun here, and Kendra Winchester host a Women in Translation readathon, which is what I'm doing today. The reason we do this readathon is because something like don't quote me, I don't know the exact statistics, but something like 80% of the books translated into English are written by men, and even more, an even higher percentage are translated by men. So we're trying to encourage books by women to be translated into English, and so that is what I'm reading this month. Now, I have definitely been over-ambitious, particularly since I've started this two days late. Um, these are not all going to get read. Probably this one is not going to get read. These ones seem a lot more doable. Um, this was Letters from Tova, which is about a, a correspondence from Tova Janssen, who I love because I love the Moomins, and she seems like quite a queer, quite a cool queer writer with lots of interesting things to say, but this book is so chunky that I really don't think I'm going to manage to read it this week. Um, I didn't really realise how big it was when I decided to request it at the library. But I do have these three others plus a collection of poetry which I'm reading on script. Revenge by Yoko Ogawa which is a collection of short stories. I've heard lots of people talk about The Memory Police and The Housekeeper and The Professor by Yoko Ogawa and um, I'm trying to get more into short stories so we've hit a couple of boxes there and it's also Yoko Ogawa is one of the authors to read as the bonus prompts for the uh, reading women challenge so costs crosses a lot of things um i think these are beautiful twisted and brilliant well i don't know that but that's what they say at the back beautiful twisted and brilliant always eerie often erotic full of living ghosts and uncanny variations so some cool creepy dark short stories definitely up my street one that i think is going to be quite difficult to read so we'll see how i go with it um but that is consent a memoir by vanessa Springora, which is one that i've heard a lot of people talk about on booktube but is about the grooming of a teenage girl by a uh middle-aged man in france in the 70s and 80s i think um and in the literary scene he was a famous writer and how it was accepted in france because they had this little free love idea um, and how that was abused very much um and caused a lot of abuse and then I also have one that I know very little about, but it won a lot of translation prizes, and that is Catalin Street by Magda Zabo. Um, actually, how I discovered a lot of things for this book, how I did research for what I wanted to read for this book, is there is a prize, which I can't remember the name of, but I will leave in the description and pop on the screen here, um, that is a prize for fiction by women that has been translated. Um, so that's where I did my research. This has been translated from the Hungarian by Len Rix. So it's an Eastern European book. Pre-war Budapest, three families live side by side on gracious Catalan Street. Their lives are torn apart in 1944 by the German occupation. The post-war regime relocates them to a cramped Soviet-style apartment and they struggle to come to terms with social political change, personal loss, and the unstated feelings of guilt over the deportation of the hell parents and the death of little Henriette. So very intrigued by this one. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about it, but I'm intrigued to read it. Um, and then the other book that I'm planning to read is a collection of poetry called ne Negatives of a Group Photograph. And one of the reasons I'm interested in reading this is because my old uh, professor, when I did a master's in creative and life writing, who was, um, she was my mentor um, and a, is a poet, uh, and that was Maura Dooley, and she worked with the translator to make these poems more poetic in English. Um, it was kind of a collaborative process. So I'm excited to read that too. And let's get into the reading, see how I, how it goes. read anything yet but just what I'd say. Um, walking home currently I just had the stitches removed from the growth on my knee. If you don't know what I'm talking about I'll leave my last vlog in the cards above. So you can see why I had stitches in my knee in the first place um, but now I'm off to work. Hello please ignore the fact I look not my best. Um, I haven't. It's Tuesday I haven't spoken to you in a few days because basically I've just been at work um, and I haven't done that much reading either. I've started Consent, um, and so far it is very readable, um, and she's sort of setting up her childhood and how she ended up being in a position to be 
kind of a groomable child, if that makes sense. Um, I also looked up the guy that groomed her and he seems like a disgusting person, like obviously, but even more disgusting than I could possibly have imagined. Um, anyway, I have also started Cartelin Street um, by Magda Zabo and I found out that she's got a book I saw on Grace's channel, GK Reads, she's got a book called The Door that I think a lot of people are really like into, they really like. Um, but this is the one that I'm reading so far, very readable, been introduced to a lot of different characters, but I'm only really early on in that. And then Revenge, I started to start and then I haven't properly started yet. But I do think I'm going to be able to get through all three of these fairly easily. And then the other one's only a poetry collection. So I'm not feeling too stressed about the idea of reading all of these because Although this looks chunky, it's actually quite short. Um, and yeah, they're all quite short. So I'm feeling optimistic about my ability to read. I'm just not feeling optimistic <laughs> in general at the moment. I'm feeling a bit meh. Um, I told you I was getting my stitches out in my knee, but I don't think I've showed you what it looks like now. So I'll, sh I'll insert a clip of that here. Um, look away if you're squeamish. Can you see that? That's my knee. Focus there we go uh it doesn't look too bad but some people don't like that sort of thing i love that sort of thing if you've got a weird body thing i'm up for seeing weird body shit so i'm gonna read and maybe i'll talk to you about the books when i've actually got a bit further in them later tonight um and tomorrow i'm going to a 91st birthday party <laughs> and getting a blood test done so it's all go here in, uh the sick of reading household Um, so I am getting ready for work um, and I am finally allowed back on my bike um, because I had those stitches in my knee um, I think I've talked about them in this video if not vlog up there where I do um, so I wasn't allowed on my bike for nearly two weeks and just before I had the stitches in my knee I fell off my bike and the chain came off um, and it came off in a really weird way or at least I'm not like a bike expert and it had come off um, in a way that where the um, like mud guard was making it on the train was making it really hard to get the train back on um so i tried to show you it but doing it one-handed uh with whilst filming with the other hand was obviously not going to work and then also doing it two-handed was not working um so my boyfriend had to come and assist me um sorry i'm just putting tights on um it's not actually cold enough for tights but my skirt's too short for them to not wear tights so i feel like I have to put them on. Uh, my boyfriend had to come and help me put the chain on, so I'm going to cycle to work now. Uh, I've also read the first two stories in Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. Hang on, we'll stop wriggling around now. Sorry, the, I know the lighting's horrible, but um, I can't be bothered to get my tripod, so I'm gonna just have to deal. Um, yeah, I finished the first two stories of Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. Um, they are connected in a way that surprised me, and I enjoyed that aspect of it. They're very readable, like, they're not too dense or anything um but apart from that they're not my favorite at the moment um i'm just kind of i think i feel like i'm missing something but yes today i'm off to work got a new top i say new new to me it was off depop i'm not sure about it 100 percent um this is lower than i would normally prefer to wear um in this style top but maybe i'll sew it up a little bit or something anyway i will see you later I just want to say that I didn't realise how bad it was going to be two weeks of not being able to exercise because I have stitches and how, oh, you can see where my helmet goes on my head because I've got just a red line right across it. Anyway, I mean, I have been cycling to work for ages, two weeks of not doing it and I'm completely wiped out. Just two weeks and I'm wiped out. Oh, I need a nap.
Hello, so it is Friday today, um, which is the final day, which is the final day of the Women in Translation Month readathon, and I have finished zero books. Um, I've started all four of the books that I intended to read for this vlog, but I have yet to finish them. Uh, so today I am off work. Um, this is my day off. I'm just not at work, and my boyfriend is at work, um, and it's also a weekday, so uh, everyone I know is also at work so it is a day that I can actually focus and dedicate on finishing these books. I don't think it's going to be a problem, none of them are particularly long um, so I think I can definitely get them all finished today. I am just not feeling particularly well either. Um, I had my blood test done this week um, but that was delayed which means that my medication has been delayed uh, which means that I am having some serious morning stiffness in my back. Um, so I had a bath as you will have seen um, to try and help with that but I am also like I don't know if you can see but I'm physically shaking at the moment um, I'm not entirely sure why I was just getting sorting through my wash basket to separate my clothes to do a light wash and um, my legs just started shaking and I had to sit down so this is going to be a very low-key day not that this vlog has been particularly exciting um, I've been working and not doing a lot uh, over the course of this vlog but um, today I'm just going to focus on reading and I'm also going to make some sort of paneer masala this evening I think yeah that's 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 it for the plans I, so I will need to go to the supermarket to get some stuff for dinner. Oh, so I have started reading all of the books, like I said. I don't think I've talked to you about the poetry book yet, which is Negatives of a Group Photograph, which is really interesting because it is done by the Poetry Translation Foundation. I think it was something like that. So it was between... Um, hang on. Let me get the names up so that I'm not being very rude. So the poems are originally re written by Azita Hareman. I am not sure about the pronunciation of that, I apologise. They've been translated by a translator um, called Elam Shakerefa and uh, Maura Dooley, who is an English poet. Um, so uh, Azita is Iranian and has written her poems in Persian, and then uh, Elam is a translator, translates them into a basic English, and then they all work together talking about like the meanings of certain words and the multiple layers of meanings and the difficulty of translation. So the introduction of this was really interesting because translating poetry is quite difficult because you're using a lot of figurative language. And then also the resonances, the meanings of a word in one culture won't necessarily translate directly to another culture. Also the way that languages are different. Um, so she spoke about the way that Persian uh, or Farsi is, she spoke about the way that Farsi is um, kind of a more impressionistic language and English is more like an exact language. Um, so there are more layers of meaning and more nuance in Farsi um, and you need more words to say the same things in English. Um, but that kind of loses the poetic nature of the book. Um, so yeah, the actual introduction was really interesting to read, particularly since I'm, this all this is about translation um, and so ideas about translation is something that I've always, well not always, but I have definitely have an interest in translation and how there are very rarely one-to-one -one words for things. Like obviously for specific objects there will be a word for chair, there will be a word for mother, but um, they aren't always the, the same resonances, the same meanings. Um, and when you move into anything more complex than a defined concrete object, um, it becomes even harder. So yeah, I have been really enjoying that. Um, so I still have about two and a half hours on the audiobook of Consent. Um, that poetry collection didn't take me very long to read, like 40% of it, so it won't take very long. Um, I'm about third, 40% of the way through Revenge as well. Um, I'm enjoying the way that those stories are connected. Um, and they are kind of, they all have a bit of a dark, gruesome element to them, uh, something a bit weird but it's not really my kind of dark. Uh, the language isn't particularly lyrical. It's very like plain and stripped, which isn't generally speaking the way that I prefer books to be. So um, it's not my favorite at the moment, but yeah, I definitely will be able to finish it. And then also right now, I'm going to continue to read Cartel in Street by Magda Zabo. Things have just, I've gotten to the halfway point and the sort of event, the pinnacle event has happened. Um, Henriette, who we know is dead from the beginning, her death has happened. Um, now uh, and yeah so I'm just going to continue with that I'm sorry if you can hear a load of construction going on outside um, but there's nothing really I can do about that um, so yeah I'm gonna get to reading <laughs> 
lunchtime so I took a break from reading and then I haven't actually eaten lunch yet <laughs> I've just organized my pantry um we bought some like baskets to organize our pantry with and um, that was last week and I haven't done it yet and I just sort of suddenly got an urge to organize my pantry I've got too much reading to do to organize everything else in my house but I really I'm feeling organizey but thankfully I'm off tomorrow and Sunday as well so um maybe this weekend it's going to be a big organizing blitz um I am vlogging like straight after this I'm starting a new vlog so if that does happen you will see it in the next video um but yeah I thought I'd show you my pantry <laughs> right so this is gonna be quite hard to see because it's quite dark and also it might not look particularly organized to you but compared to we got these um like tealy colored baskets from Tesco's they are recycled plastic I think um and so I filled up our our pantry and everything before was just sort of in there and you couldn't see what anything was we've got snack basket um which is biscuits and uh from the polish shop these are caraway seed um pretzels they are delicious i've got my tins i've got my beans i've got my carbs okay it doesn't look particularly organized but i know where everything is and i know what everything is now this looks like a biscuit jar actually a jar of rice <laughs> with a cup measure in um we tend to buy everything in bulk so we have like a 10 kilo bag of rice um which is quite unwieldy uh so we decanted some into a biscuit tin that we got from charity shop and we use that as our rice storage we go through rice quite quickly uh we're a big rice household so um it doesn't get stale in there or anything i don't know i don't know much about rice when it goes off but it goes out of there quite quickly so <laughs> I think it's fine. Hello, um, <laughs> it is later. I have finished Catalan Street uh, by Magda Zabo. I enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed reading this book. Um, it's really interestingly written. It really feels quite dreamlike. Uh, one of the characters that we are following throughout is dead. Um, so there is that element of fabulism um, because she like, reappears in her physical body as well. And there is just this sort of sense of unreality. And I think that's kind of commentary on living under these unexpected times this fascism and soviet communism um etc but whilst i have finished it i know i enjoyed it um i don't really know what i think about it yet it's one of those books that i'm going to have to let ruminate for a little while in my brain not at a book where a lot happens it's very quiet like a lot does happen like obviously serious things happen but they happen off the page like one of the characters is denounced and taken to a uh, prison camp um to of the characters are Jewish people captured by the Nazis. It was a really interesting read and has made me want to know more about Hungary's history. It's not a country that I know a huge amount about. Um, so yeah, I've, I enjoyed it. Uh, I will try tomorrow to do like a proper roundup and maybe have some more thoughts for you. But so far, that's all I can say. I am I'm also currently about halfway through Consent. Um, and it is actually not as hard a read as I thought it was going to be, which is not to say that it's an easy read. Like it's about someone, a child being groomed and um, no one taking it seriously at all. Like the police not taking it seriously, um, her mother not taking it seriously, the whole literary establishment allowing him to go on programs and talk about his books and how funny it is that he loves teenage girls. And there are some really horrific things, but I did think that this was going to be a lot harder of a read and it isn't as hard as I feared it would be. Um, I think a lot of the time people talk about difficult content in books and I instantly get turned off, like I don't want to read it um, because I feel like I won't be able to handle it. Um, but I uh, think I can probably handle more than I thought I could, if that makes any sense. I don't know, I find it hard to judge memoir writing styles um, because it's not going to be the same as a novel, of course. and. It's not a genre that I am particularly familiar with. I've read a few this year, but it's not one of my genres that I generally read a lot of. Um, 
it's very readable or in my case listenable too and very clear eyed and not sentimental um which i guess you wouldn't be but it's it's allowing an ambiguity not in whether whether what's happening is right or wrong but in um vanessa spanura's own response to it and her own experience of it um the messages that she gets from culture and society and from her own experience and also just from being groomed her own ambivalence and confusion around the situation i think is done very well um now i'm going to make dinner so i'll keep listening whilst i make dinner um i'm so tired i'll get back to you in a bit <laughs> maybe i'll show you i'm making a pinna curry so maybe i'll show you some of that hello you can see my glorious curtains they were in the house when we got here um curtains are expensive though so they're staying for the time being um it's hot uh and i have a migraine but i made dinner as you saw it was much tastier than it looked delicious uh paneer masala then i finished consent whilst i was making that dinner and i have also finished negative silver group photograph hang on please light let there be light no oh, spooky because i have a migraine i'm not feeling entirely capable of talking to you about everything but um i thought consent was good but not as great as everyone's been saying um or at least the people that have read it that i've watched talk about it have said um i thought it was pretty good uh, good at dealing with the nuance. I thought the end it wrapped up very quickly. Very short book and I feel like there could have been more but it's a personal person's story so I find it hard to critique for that reason. Um, it also talked a bit about like the abuser being still allowed on chat shows and um, even though it being like a very open secret that he was a paedophile and it not being like considered a problem or whatever because of these mores around liberality. Um, and sexuality and all these famous French people signing petitions to lower the age of consent and all this sort of stuff and I suppose it's kind of like Catherine Deneuve talking about Me Too um, there was this old now it's old fashioned but at the time it was like a revolutionary idea about freedom to choose but it kind of just made freedom for abuse um anyway I'm, I'm not speaking to the best of my ability because i have a migraine right now um and negatives of a group photograph again i've really enjoyed um i think that to comprehend it entirely i would have to read it again poetry often i find bears repeating in order to get all of the nuances but there are lots of pages i've highlighted or um bookmarked on script um there's some really really beautiful turns of phrase um really beautiful use of rhythm and rhyme and i like the way that it works so well as a poem in english because they've worked with a poet not just a translator um obviously i don't speak farsi so i can't really comment on the language as such in the same way but I think as a collaborative project it's worked really well and it was a really interesting book to read for the purpose of this readathon about women in translation because it really made me think about translation um so yeah i enjoyed that um i'm gonna try and read the rest of revenge now before i go to bed um and i will come back in the morning tomorrow and give you a proper wrap up and a sign off friends my tripod is doing something weird so i apologize for the angle um but i'm finished now i finished revenge by yoko agawa which was my final book for the readathon the women in translation readathon um i have to say i kind of slogged through this i found it very difficult to read um there was a point in it there's a character who appears in multiple different stories as a who is a writer um and one of the other characters reads the work and says something about her writing there was nothing special about the prose the characters or the oh god where was it 
The prose was unremarkable, as were the plot and characters, but there was an icy current running under her words. Which is true. That is how I feel about Yoko Ogawa. The plot is unremarkable, the writing unremarkable, the characters unremarkable. Like, I just couldn't care about this book. Um, which sounds quite harsh. I know a lot of people love Yoko Ogawa, but for me, this was like boring, 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 grisly twist. Boring, 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 grisly twist. And it's like, when you do a grisly twist in every single story, I'm no longer surprised by the grisly twist and the whole plot, is, the whole thing is boring anyway. Um, and yeah, there was nothing to the writing, which obviously, again, as I've mentioned with several of these books, because they're in translation, I only know the English version, so I cannot tell you what the Japanese is like, what the Hungarian is like, what the French is like. Um, but I really, this was not my style. This was not my style at all. It was cold, boring, removed, um, pointlessly grisly, nothing beautiful about it. Yeah, I did not enjoy this book. I did finish it because it was so short, I felt like I needed to, but I didn't love this book at all. So, um, I did, however, enjoy both of these books and I enjoyed um, and Negatives of a Group Photograph. So I have had a good time reading books for the Women in Translation Readathon and I've been really getting into reading more works in translation. Um, the translator's notes in both of these, as well as the uh, passage on the translation of poetry, um, really intrigued me. I really like works about translation, um, which makes me really want to read 50 Words by Polly Barton that I know a lot of people have been talking about and get more into that aspect of translation. I definitely want to read more of Magda Zabo's work. I know a lot of people have been reading The Door for this readathon, um, so I think maybe I will try that one next. Um, and so the, the prompts for the readathon were to read the group book, which was uh, Minor Details, which I didn't read because I thought it would be too difficult for me. Um, and then also to read a book from a language you haven't read from before. I have read books translated from Japanese and French before, but I have never read a book translated from Farsi and I've never read a book translated from Hungarian, definitely. So this one and I think the poetry were both new to me. And then also it was to read something that wasn't a novel. This was the only novel I read. Um, the memories of a group photograph, negatives of a group photograph was a poetry collection. Then I had a nonfiction memoir and a collection of short stories. So I feel like I've read quite a range of different things, which is also always fun. I'm going to go now. Um, let me know in the comments what Women in Translation you've read because I'm always trying to read more in translation or at least that is one of my goals this year. Um, the goal I'm doing the best at actually I think but I am definitely enjoying it as well. Please remember to give this th video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and to subscribe. I put out new videos every Thursday and Sunday so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!